Hi, welcome back um, to News Hub, and we're following this developing story where uh, 970 passengers got on a train from Abuja to Kaduna, uh, never reached their destination because a bomb was detonated on the rail track, and now you have family members at the train station looking for their loved ones. They have no information, embarrassingly, several hours after. And um, the latest we hear from the railway corporation is that they suspended services temporarily on that route until they get to the bottom of it. We have retired Captain Umar Babengida Liu, a security expert. He was once with the D Director of Military Intelligence also too. Always a pleasure to have you, the one we like to call Blade also too. Blade. Yes, good morning. It's Captain Blade with you. Captain Blade. I mean, this is, this is unbelievable, and I'm sure that in the last couple of hours you've been besieged with calls also, too. I know you're very familiar with that route, but uh, let's get your initial reactions to the things that you've had, uh, Captain Blade. Uh, yesterday, I was actually jolted out of, I don't know what to call it, it was a shock when information got to me to the effect that some 970 passengers were stranded somewhere in the night on a railway track that had been railed with by an ex in a, you know, improvised explosive device. Incidentally, yesterday I was on channels television and I spoke to these particular things. I spoke to what is happening and it was just as if one was prophesying something or was foreboding something or was warning against something. Boom, there it was in the evening. And you see, Kaduna itself happens to be my playground, if I could put it that way. My playground in the sense that what happened in Kaduna, high in the money, where the, uh, and a bomb exploded in a, on a, in a cycle, and, and also where the incident happened on the tarmac, those areas are not areas that are new to me. We grew up as boys and cadets training around that area. I have loved ones also who live in Rigasa, High in Amani, Bachemrua, you mentioned it. So I frequent use that railway station. What happened it in itself brings to fore what I have said. It is time for us to bear our fans and deal with these people. You see, um, my good friend, let me put it to you this way. In today's times, in the times we're in right now, if any politician shows up and offers you a loaf of bread for a vote, my brother, you are looking at a thief. And if any politician also likewise stands up in our hallowed chambers, legislative chambers, Senate and House of Reps, to converse for retirement plans and rehabilitation, and re what do they call all those R's for terrorists and bandits and whatever they want to call them that one too is the sponsor why are you scheming for soft landing for people who kill soldiers and yet the soldiers who die their families don't get no soft soft landing my democracy has teeth democracy yeah. needs to fight we've gone beyond all the kinetics and the and the political the, you see where negotiation, dialogue, diplomacy fails. You tell a soldier to go in there and do his job. Please let him do the job. All right. Don't tell soldiers, you see, you must do. Look, it's time for us to just bear our fangs and stand Ukraine to Russia. That's all. All right, Captain Blay. Um... I mean, for, I said it at the beginning of the program today that when the, the project was about to commence, myself, I want to imagine some other Nigerians were very excited that I would have a real system, you know, resuscitated in the country uh, because there had been a lot of pressure on the roads uh, instead of us having cargo trains and all of that. That's why even when we build roads within days, months, sometimes they don't get up to a year, they, they get, you know, bad. And so that was a very good option. But if you take a look at the operations of the NRC, uh, that the, uh, the charge of railway corporation as well as the Ministry of Transportation and the, uh, let's say, the security agencies, what do you think with the uh, 
if you want to evaluate the collaboration between these three uh, sectors of our national life, would you say that they've been doing enough to ensure safety of lives and, uh, of course, property on the rail? On the railways, as we speak, everything is resting on the platform of security. Can the railway worker, the average NLC worker, the one who works boots on ground, forget about what the leadership of the NLC are saying. Let's go into the NLC now. Let's wear their shoes. Can the Nigerian Labour Congress man, if my wife or if I was a woman and my husband was among the NLC Labour Congress people that will have to do work on that railway line or will have to do anything that has to do with that railway line, can they actually feel safe to go there and do it? And if not, it's actually a security problem. If there are issues with the NLC, and we are seeing a situation where we're talking about these, we're talking about all those things that the NLC rightfully wants, is that not also an aspect of our national security conundrum? Security, you see, is like the ether that surrounds us. It's like the air we breathe nothing works without it and so where do we go forward from going forward is to actually compartmentalize each of our security needs and address them dispassionately uh, all right Not politically correctly altruistic and what have we yes captain blade actually was referring to the national railway corporation the nigerian railway corporation i beg your pardon um this was yes. an, an instance of terrorist attack but we had in a couple of weeks ago where we heard that uh, the train, you know, ran out of fuel in the middle of nowhere. So I'm questioning, I'm trying to get your view on the operations within uh, the, 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 the corporation itself vis-a-vis uh, -vis in connection with other. You've mentioned about the need for us to fix security, but even within the, the, the railway corporation, you, you think things, all is well there. No, not, not at all. Not at all. If I said all is well there, honestly speaking, karma will not forgive me. As I told you, I'm a frequent rule without that route. That particular railway, you are talking about the Abuja Rigasa, Rijana Axis. And trust me, when we get in a ticket there, in fact, you, 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 you will have to, you need the anointing of God to get a ticket. Go try some of their apps. Don't work. So you are forced to come back and buy. Buying itself, you could come there and you have run out of tickets. You get onto that train, the fans don't work, the ACs have already gone moribund. I'm telling you this, if there are people listening, please call in and change me and call me a liar. You can't even get to charge your phone. So oh God help you, you are stranded. If there is no, all those plugs for charging the phones, they are down. Let's not be deceived. Those trains are not performing at optimal capacity as at the commissioning. All those things we saw when they were commissioned all have relapsed. There doesn't seem to be any maintenance plan. There doesn't seem to be any, 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 it's just like, just do it is it claim victory or claim credit for having done it but those who travel and are willing to speak to the truth will say it as it is traveling on that is no easy task trust me captain blade if, if you um if, if you think about the moment that this has happened um well, you look at boko haram um, the attack on the at the UN headquarters, the police headquarters. I mean, those were milestones that just, you know, pushed that group as a terror group out. With the bandits, we've, uh, you know, looked left and right, uh, argued whether they call the bandits or terrorists, uh, the court. This incident, obviously, uh, is one that puts them now on the map. I uh, mean, to attack a train, 970 people on board. Uh, as a security expert, um, what does this tell you about this group of people? What are we dealing with here? As I have said many times in the past, 
these things make them bolder these things also make them feel yes we are making progress i recall way back i don't know whether the president president muhammad Buhari, ever got to hear of what i said i said it in your studios and i sent and reached out to him and i said mr president if you do not handle this issue of bandits properly there will be to your own administration what Boko Haram was to PDP there will be to your own administration what Boko Haram was to PDP Boko Haram was the albatross PDP had to carry and the bandits today have now become the albatross APC will also carry. I only wish in my heart that someone had told the president this. And this is coming us to play because these people repeatedly rubbish the majesty of the state. That's the problem. They repeatedly rubbish the majesty of the state and erode whatever confidence is left of the citizens in the state's capacity to protect them. And at the middle of all of this conundrum, unfortunately, are my beloved security operatives across board, the armed forces, the police. They are the ones who go there and use the same life to combat a problem, which is seemingly, seemingly getting bolder because certain people develop cold feet. So as I said earlier, when you see a man who comes to you and says take a bag of rice and vote for me you're looking at and when you see a legislator who stands up in the hallowed chambers of our house and canvasses for retirement plans resettlement plans rehabilitation plans reintegration plans for those who kill our soldiers you are also looking at someone who we should be fingering as the godfather of terrorists as a security expert yourself, and you also you, you've told us that you fly that route very often. Uh, we mentioned something earlier on today. I was saying that even if you have to line up the entire troops that we have in the country from Kaduna to Abuja, I wonder if they would be able to cover the the land mass that you have to travel uh, to and fro Abuja uh, to Kaduna, or you know, vice versa. So what would you now advise the authorities to do to forestall a recurrence of this and ensure that our rails are safe? Thank you again for that question. I'm happy you asked that question. The solution to that problem was born right there in your studio. I will not mention the person, but I think he's listening. He called my attention to a device and I took this device and I took it across as many state governors as I can. I took it across as many traditional rulers as I can. And that device is simply what burns, the, it takes the sting out of any kind of attack on locations. That device is easy to, to, to you don't even need fuel for crying out loud, you don't need fuel. <laughs> because we are having an issue with fuel. Trains are now running out of fuel. That device is self-driven. It doesn't need fuel. It has gotten to as many governors could get them to, and today, nobody is talking about it, so it's baffling. That's the solution. The solution is simply to have an eye everywhere. I could see people in that train who were sending their GPRS location from their phones to loved ones who shared it with media houses and right there on time real time we could spot where they were detail these bandits detail these roads we can follow them everywhere i can actually streamline their activities from when they left to where and know even where they are where they leave I could even be mischievous with this device and immediately they leave i just put them on social and we see even how they are riding some of them will even receive notification and watch themselves as they are moving what do you think happens when you do that to someone he will run out of your 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 your, your, your national space because 
There is no hiding place anymore. Our planet is flat today. Nothing can hide. So it's baffling when you keep seeing these people coming and going as they please. And my soldiers, my brothers in the profession, dying as if they were flies. They're not getting anything but those who seem to be destroying them are the ones that we seem to want to plead with, dialogue with, diplomatic, with all those... The, the, look, it's, it's baffling. So the solution, as I told you, is there. There's an amplitude of solutions on the shelves. No shortage of solutions. And I give credit to that gentleman in your studios. I won't mention names for his own sake. Who actually did the job? Thank God we're talking on Silverbed this morning. We have to leave it at that and then come back and talk base with you again. Retired Captain Umar Babengi, the new Captain Blade, security expert. Uh, we hope when we get back to you, we'll have a lot of answers to questions that have, have been posed today. And maybe we better learn more lessons also to, to prevent a reoccurrence. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you. Excellent. All right. So from that, uh, we're going to go health and uh, we'll keep you updated with what is happening in Kaduna State uh, following the attack on the rail track where 970 passengers uh, were stopped short in their journey. We're still waiting for more information. Please stay with us. <laughs>